right, so today we're doing 2A.2 part one, and we're going to um, take a look at the relationship between linear and arithmetic sequences, okay? Um, we know that the linear function is y equals mx plus b, correct? That's a linear function, boom, bam, we know that. Um, and therefore the domain is all real numbers. That means my possibilities are endless, correct? Um, and we know that what our b is our y-intercept, right? All those things we understand. So when we're talking about arithmetic, arithmetic sequences, um, we can represent that using linear functions. However, the sequences and their corresponding functions may have different domains, okay? Which means, just means that there may be a restriction on my all real numbers. Does that make sense? All right. So here we're starting with, and we're going to use this graph. And it says complete the table below. So if we look at the table below, um, we have one is negative five, two is blah, blah, blah. Um, we should be able to make, fill in the rest of the tables pretty easily. Um, but the question is, what would it be at zero? Because zero is not on our graph, but using your knowledge and skills, what is your prediction of where zero would be? It would be where? Negative seven. Why is it at negative seven? Perfect. There we go. So we know that this is at negative seven and the rest of the table we can fill in from the graph, right? So we're at negative seven, negative seven, negative five, negative three, negative one, one, three, and five. Agreed? Okay. So it says find the difference. So what is our difference here? It's a positive two, right? Our difference is a positive two. So when we write this as a sequence, we're writing it as a sequence. Instead of a linear equation, we're going to write it as a sub n, and it, it equals our one value. Remember, it's based off what your one, not your zero. Oh. So, no, you're fine. I will grade it. Um, yes, I told Yeah, I was like, that's fine. Um, I started with A1 in my notes. We're going to go with A1 and talk about it. All right. So I started with A sub 1. And my A sub 1 is negative 5. Is that okay? All right. Because I'm using A sub, using that. I'm now going to establish what is the pattern that's taking place. What am I doing every time? What is happening? It's two something, but since I started at a sub one, it's going to actually be a little bit different. There we go. It would be the n minus one of it. Wait, so why do you have to start with Because I started with a sub one, I'm now having to subtract a value before I plug in its n. But why did you start with a sub You can start with any one. It's going to simplify down. Like I'm going to show you. Yeah. So, and it's going to end up doing what? It's going to end up being the, the same thing. So when we're talking about this as a function, when you're writing it in function form, that just means you're cleaning this up. Does that make sense? So now I'm looking for f of n. If I was looking for f of n, all I need to know is two things. I need to know what is my slope and what is my b, correct? So for this one, my f of n is what? What is my slope? It's 2. And what is my b? Negative 7. So this is it as a function. This is it as an arithmetic sequence. It, also, it just depends on what the problem is asking of you. Yeah. And I guess paying attention. Oh, I started with one because one was what was given to me. That's why. Uh, okay, that was definitely I was like, why did I start with one? I started with one because that's what was given to me. All right, so we're going to do this again. The nth term. Exactly, your nth term. Yes, but we're talking about in terms, in terms of n, not in terms of x. So be careful with that. Um, I don't know how picky the graders are going to be, but I know that sometimes when you're used to writing mx plus b and you write something in 
a different notation. They may deduct a point, even though everything else is right, but you put an X instead of an N. So just be mindful of that, okay? I thought about signing up to be a grader just so I could see how this test is graded, but I don't want to give that kind of commitment to them. <laughs> Right. So, they so, right? Yes, you do get partial credit on free response because it's great on the rubric. So, all right, here we go. Number two. So, number two, we have here it says, given the arithmetic sequence um, where a sub one equals 17 and a sub eight equals negative 39, state the domain and range of the sequence. So, I'm asking myself, how am I getting from 17 to negative 39? What do you see happening? Uh, we, we have to be subtracting a certain amount. Okay. And what is that? What do you think is that certain amount we're subtracting? Okay. <laughs> so if all those fails and you can't figure out, yeah. and but your D is just your slope average or average rate of change. All right, so find it. All right, so when you could not figure it out, but you're given two n values because we said that there's a relationship between arithmetic sequences and linear equations, that means that we can use our average rate of change, aka our slope, to determine our difference. Does that make sense? So to determine your difference, so we're looking for our d, our difference. That's our negative 39 minus 17 over 8 minus 1. Okay, negative 39 minus 17 is negative, what? Negative, well, the numerator. <laughs> negative 56, right? So we got negative 56 over seven, which equal negative eight, right? So now can I fill in the table and finish the pattern and determine the domain and range? Yes, so what is the domain? When What are my, after 17 I have? After nine I have? After one, I have. After negative seven. After, oh, well, you know, just go with it. What happened? 23. Negative 23. Negative 31. So that means for this specific table, because this sequence is only from 17, from A1 to A8, my domain, we're going to write it in set notation. Now, do not judge my brace. That's the best it's going to get. Eight, okay, and then my range is going to be, and you list it out in order. You either can increase or decrease, whichever one you prefer. I'm just going to save myself the hassle. Just write it how it is. <laughs> hey, guys. All right, doable from a table. Yes. Cool. Yeah. All right. So with that same logic, could we write our our um, arithmetic and our function sequence? Yes. So what would be our a sub n? Mm hmm. Because we started at one and we're given one. Seventeen. It's gonna be seventeen minus right. Minus eight times n minus one. And then what will be our f of n? Um, it would be uh, minus Ooh. five plus twenty-five. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> you still say like a is in still Um... I think because you're saying A of N, you're establishing that this is your first given information. So your A sub one. Um, other than that, I don't know the reason of how, but yeah. Oh, the reason why you have to write N minus one is because you're talking about in the sequence. So like following this number or after this number, this is the rule that's following. Because sequences usually say what's happening before and after, not exactly at that value. Oh, we're gonna come up with a list of the A and then you can be that hard. No, I won't be that. I will not be that. Yeah. 
Oh, guys, I wrote it in the wrong spot. And no one said nothing to me. Yeah. A sub n equals 17 minus 8 sub n minus 1. Why does my pen hate me? I don't know. And then our f of n equals, I'm going to write it 25 minus 8. There we go. One less character I got to write. I have no clue why I wrote it all in one box because, you know, it was fun that way. Yeah, I just wrote it in the wrong spot. Okay. Yes, no, doable? Doable? All right. Yeah. Hey, seriously. All right, now we're talking about explicit formula. Uh, explicit formula denotes the nth term of the sequence where n tells the term's location. So like, where is it located, right? Is it event number one, event number two, whatever happened? Um, it defines the sequence as a formula in terms of n, which is why you could be written as a subscript notation of a sub n or a function of notation f of n. These are same information, just different ways of writing it, okay? So talking about the different ways, making sure we're good here. If we have this equation right here, I would like for you guys to write your a sub n, I'm gonna by your shell, and you're gonna do f of n, okay? So you're gonna fill in the table, fill in everything, and then we'll define them in terms of subscript notation and function notation. You got this. All right, here we go. So in your sequence, if you couldn't see it, it was listed out for you to try to help you with your eyes. So you have 27, 22, 17, 12, and seven, right? So in subscript notation, this is my A sub two, A sub three, A sub four, A sub five, A sub six, correct? In function notation, I'm look at F of two, F of three, F of four, F of five, don't know why it keeps doing that, and F of six, okay? So when I'm writing it in subscript notation for any any number in the sequence, any term, I have A sub N, any term in the function, F sub N, correct? All right, so what were my subs subscript notation? 32 minus... Perfect, n minus one. And what is my function notation? And there we go. Or you could have written it as 37 minus 5n. Yes, doable. All right, now let's go backwards. What if I give you your sequence? Yes, I'm giving you your sequence. <laughs> So you have f of n equals 9 minus 3 times n minus 4. And I want you to write out the first 10 of the sequence. Okay, so what I'm asking you for is n1, 10, 10. Okay, I want you to find my first values, my first 10 sequences. When you're listing out, you're always using braces, by the way. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. If they just get different every single time I draw them. Just accept them. No. All right. All right. Excuse me. Here we go. So for this one, um, this was a generated sequence. So it's not one that you're coming up with a linear sequence, right? We've been doing that. This one was given to us. Um, it still is linear, just not started with one necessarily. Anyways, um, what we get for the first one? 18. Good. Then we got what? We got what? 15, then we got, then we got, um, then, six, three, three, zero, negative three, negative six, negative nine. Yeah. All right, so we're good going backwards, right? Here's your sequence, um, it, your function for your sequence, create my blah, 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 whatever it asks you for, yes? 
doable. All right, now it says, can you find the 200th term of the sequence? And the answer is no. yes, because you're just looking for f of 200. So if I'm just looking for f of 200, that means all I'm simply doing is substituting in 200. That's going to give me 9 minus 3 times 196, which equals, thank you. Okay. All right. It wants you to take your function and put it in slope intercept form. Can you do that? Yes. How do you do that? You don't have to even do that. You distribute and combine like terms. That is all it's asking you to do. This is true. This is true. But here, all it's asking you to do is distribute and combine like terms, correct? So if I know where I'm starting, I have 9 minus 3n plus 12. Combine like terms, what is 9 plus 12? Distribute. 21. It's your preference. I'm just going to show you the math. To me, it just makes easier sense to distribute and combine. To you, it may not. So what we, we're left with 21 minus 3 in. Correct? Again, easy. Correct? Yeah. No one's like, this has been a terrible lesson. Perfect. All right, let's apply this to real world situations, huh? So I've always taught to use the least amount of characters as possible, and you're not going to simplify because then that defeats the purpose of distributing. Like, like you wouldn't undistribute. Why would you take the three out? Not in function notation. No, no one left me anything. All right, here we go. We're going to talk about real world examples. Um, Here we go. We have Elizabeth Waters, her vegetable garden using water she collects in a 55 gallon rain barrel. On May 3rd, the barrel was full of water. And on May 8th, the barrel contained 47 gallons of water. 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 So all right, we're going to, I'm going to do a little different here, actually. I'm going to do it by the month, the day of the month. So we're going to let the 55 be our A3. That's the May 3rd. So May 3rd, we're going to let May third equal a sub three does it is that cool so therefore on the first day it had collected how much at its highest 55 so we're gonna let so then if i'm on may 8th that's gonna be my a sub eight and i'm at 47 I think if you have the barrel, if you go any higher than 55, it's going to roll out of the barrel. So, I made it that way just because sticking with the May 3rd, because not knowing where May 2nd and May for May 1 was at. So, I just use what's given to me. Oh, you're starting in the A third instead of like starting in the A third. Yeah, oh, okay. just so that I can follow the days of the week a little, the, like the day that it falls on, a little bit better. But so we're not going to have anything before A six months. Mm -mm, because we're only focusing on here. Well, just write the first six terms. We're gonna have five, one, and two. No, because we can just. I'm starting at A three, so I'm doing four, five, six, seven. Okay, so to find my first six terms. So looking here, first I need to determine what is my what my my average rate of change. How is the water flowing? My my slope. How do I do that? Which is five days, right? Oh. So I'm looking at the change in the water over five days because I need to know what is the rate per day. Okay. The key thing about sequences is that they follow a one 
one day at a time situation generally. So we have 47 minus 55 divided by five. And what do we get? So we're gonna do negative 1.6, right? We'll put it in terms. Yeah. So every day I'm losing one and six tenths of a gallon. Does that make sense? So knowing that, can we list out our first six terms of our sequence? Okay, so this sequence, its domain is from three to eight at this point. So we start off at, I'm gonna draw my 55. So 55, it, if you're not good at decimals, think about it as money. If you have $55 and you spend a dollar and 60 cents, how much are you left with? 53.4. You spend another dollar and 60 cents. What are you left with? There we go. Another another dollar 60. Another dollar 60. And then one more dollar 60. 47. Oh, what is wrong with my pen? That was horrible. I, I couldn't accept that one. All right. That's my beautiful base brace for you. Okay. It says write an explicit rule, um, both in subs and subscript notation and function notation. So we're going to first start with our ups, our a sub n. So we're writing our a sub n. They're called braces. Braces? Braces. Braces. It's a math. Yeah. I thought they were called something like fancier. Just a brace. <laughs> Nothing else. All right. So our beginning of our domain is 55. I mean, our range is 55. And that's because our domain starts at A sub 3, right? So we're going to put in 55. Our difference is negative 1.6. And we're counting. So is it N minus 3? In minus one, one day at a time. Is it not one day at a time? Yeah, average rate per day. Yeah, but yeah, but it's, it's still you put you said in is so three. It's well your initial. Where did your your domain start at? Our domain started on a three, so the value of that is where our, our initial begins. Okay, I think we're supposed to put whatever a sub whatever it is. Yeah, I know that's my thought. Please return. Mm -hmm. On the note, you tell us to put. I will double check what they said, but for as far as my knowledge goes, this is you only can go with what's given to you. So, like, I don't know what happened at a sub zero, I don't know what happened at a sub one. I only know that my initial value for this problem is 55. So, my initial in this domain, which is from a3 to a8, is all I can focus on. So, my initial is a3, and what was it? A3, 55. And from A3 to A8, its rate of change is negative 1.6. And I'm counting by one day at a time. I think if you show your work on the test to the lecture, you're starting at A3. They'll see it, yeah. Out, but... okay. Clearly explaining yourself and writing out your work is going to be your key for getting your points in the rubric. Be mm -hmm. So I want it in subscript, and now I want it in function notation. So f of n equals. There you go. Good job. I just didn't want to correct her. It was fine either way. Yes. All right. So now that I have this, could I make a prediction of? what my reign, well, what would be left in the barrel on the next 10 day period. Yeah. Can you explain it into, if we put two in, then gina equals 15 plus four. No, it's a four. On which one? Because it's, it's, it's a, a, a four. four. Remember, our n is our three, where we start. Right here, we established that a3 is 55, a8 is 47. If we plugged in three, it should equal 55. Yeah. No, that's that's what I'm saying. 
Well, it's I three minus one equals three. three. Like, have have eight. Eight. You know what? Wow, and gray. Yeah, I'm I think that's 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 you one. have to put minus three. Yeah. 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 And minus one. I put it in. 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 I put now y'all ready to second guess my letter? Yes, y'all are 100% right. Because I did not, hey, I, I love it. I'm, I'm not mad at it. It should be a three. Because my A, my A sub N is A sub three, not A sub one. Yes. This should be different. Yeah. It's not. Because you have to plug zero in, and that gives you negative three. And then negative three is going to be positive, and you add it. So it should be at 59 and some change. 59 point what? Because this is the third. It's not two, one, and then another one. Yes. Yes, y'all are good. In my mind, I was like, I'll make May 3rd A sub 3, and it'll be make it easier. Yeah. It did. It so did. True, 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 true. Okay. So it says here, see that there's no rain. Um, No rain. When will it be empty? So when will the rain barrel be empty? Assume there's no rain in the next 10 days. So we're looking for what day? Like, yeah, what in is going to make this happen? So if I'm taking either, I'm say, taking this and sending it equal to, so we're looking for F of N equal to zero. Or if you want to do A sub N equal to zero, does it matter? No, you just got to set one of these equal to zero. But you have to set weight to set F of zero, right? This equal to zero? So after we subtract, we get negative 59.8 equals negative 1.6 N divide by negative 1.6. And what do we get? We got what? So we get N equals 37.8. Four? You said three, five? Yeah, three, seven, five. All right, so in terms of the day, we're no longer, clearly, we're not in what month anymore? Okay. We're not in May anymore, correct? <laughs> May ends on the what? 31st. So May ended on the 31st, 34, oh, thir eight, after eight days. I can't even talk, 31st. <laughs> so we're on June 8th? Is that June 8th? It has to be eight days, not seven days. Yeah. Yeah. Eight So remember, I said we let May 3rd be our three? Yeah. That's because this is our May 3rd. So May 3rd is our N3. So if I need to know, it says it's going to take 37.4 days. So from May oh. 4, May 1st, it took 37.4 days. And like Lydia said, it's not going to be completely empty until the eighth day. So counting out from there, that puts us at June 8th. It will be completely empty. Because on the 37th, it won't be quite empty, right? It'll have a little bit left in it. It'll be completely empty on June 8th. Did you learn the knuckle too? Yeah. Except for February. Yeah. So your first knuckle, you start with your first knuckle, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, and then repeat. August, September, October, November, 
December. Yeah, wait, huh? Random. No. Wait, but no. The up is for 31st. February is the only oddball. And then it helps you remember that July and August both are 31. You start with your first knuckle. So we had just said, okay, we're at 55. So we let A sub 1 equal 55. Grace. Erase, 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 erase. 55. And then we went five days later. So five days later from here would be A sub six. There's 31 days in me. Is it not? Yeah, so I was good. Because there's 31 days, so 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 7? Yeah. 31, 6 days, 7 days later. Okay. Fine with that. Math ain't math ain't. All right, so if we let A, if we did this, then it would have been A1 equals 55, A6 equals 47. Agreed? Comfortable with that? So then your first six terms are still going to be the same first six terms. Yes? So my first terms are still going to be, ignore that weird thing that happens, 55, 53.4, 50, I don't even know why I erased them, 51, 57, where are we at? 51.8, right? Y'all aren't going to help me remember? 50.2, 48.6, and 47. Yes. So then the rule here, that's why it would be A sub N equals 55 minus 1.6 N minus 1. Agree? And that's because our A sub 1 is 55. Goes from there. Yes. So then our F of N for this one, that's when you would get the negative 1.6 N plus 56.6. Yes. Because we're assuming that this was one, and therefore we would just go ahead and add 1.6 half to so find zero. And now I'm just going to set this and equal it. So we have negative 1.69, 6n plus 56.6 equals zero. We get negative one. Oh my gosh, pen. N equals negative 56.6. We divide, and we get n equals something. What is that? Like 35. 35 and some change? I, I was there to be yeah. Equals 35.4. Okay, so now you're starting at May 3rd, correct? And from May 3rd, you're going 35 plus, well, we're going to do 36 days out from May 3rd. Yeah? Does that make sense? Because your initial started on May 3rd. So from there, 36 days out, that puts us at 3rd to the 31st is 28, 28 days. And that puts us at June 8th. Are we back at June 8th? June 8th? I think as long as you have the work that supports it, I think you'll be fine. So this is with A being one. So this was May 3rd with A sub one. The other one was with A sub three. But does that help a little? 